Good evening, everyone. I know it's been a while since we've done a video, so we're just going to do a really quick uh, setup video for the new Tetra to go. I've had a few people ask me, you know, to have some detailed instructions as far as setup. I do have them on my website, uh, which I'll, I'll actually use to, to follow during this video. But uh, if you were to navigate to rgb2go.com, under resources, you'll see Tetra to go setup instructions. So as you can see, step one, make sure your voltage is correct. And this is going to be solely determined by which pixels you're using. Uh, either you're going to be using 5 or 12 volt pixels. If you're using 12 volt pixels, make sure your power supply is also a 12 volt power supply. And make sure you have this voltage selection jumper set to 12 volts. If your pixels are 5 volt, make sure your power supply is 5 volt. And make sure you've set the jumper to 5 volts. And that is here. The jumper is removable. It's a series of three pins. Just connect the two pins that you need. In our case, we're doing 12 volts. And next up, we're going to connect our power supply. Uh, and in our case, we're using a LRS 350 12 volt MIMO power supply. That is the, the staple in our industry. So you'll see, so you move this in the frame. You have load, neutral, and ground. These are the three that will connect to your AC cable. And then V negative and V positive, those connect to your various devices, including the controller. Your AC cable is going to be one of two kinds. It's either going to be the US standard or the international standard. The US standard has three wires in it, black, white, and green. And the international standard is brown, blue, and green and white striped. Um, for the U.S. standard, the black is, is load, white is neutral, and green is ground. And for the international standard, brown is load, blue is neutral, and green and yellow stripe is ground. See, I happen to have the international standard here, so I will hook that up accordingly. Brown going to load, blue going to neutral, and green and yellow going to ground. Um, any AC cables you get from RGB to go will automatically have the spade connectors on them just to make this process a little easier. Okay, make sure those are snug. Make sure it is not plugged into the wall yet. We will be doing that last. Okay, next up is your DC cable connecting power from here to the controller. In our case, we are using a 12 gauge DC power cable. 12 gauge is important because this controller can support up to 20 amps of current uh, and you'll need at least a 12 amp cable if you're going to be utilizing all those 20 amps. Uh, if you use a 16 gauge cable that can only support up to like 12 to 13 amps so a 12 gauge cable is the way to go. Um, you'll want to plug the red cable into V plus and the black cable in V minus and on the other end you'll see 5 and 12 volt that's where the red goes and ground is where the black goes. Do that real quick. Okay, plug in the other end into the controller. Loosen these up a bit. There we go. So AC power is plugged in, DC cables connected. Next up is actually connecting the pixels to the controller. Now, since my pixels are X connect, uh, I'm going to need an X connect pigtail, which is one of these female pigtail with a Phoenix male Phoenix connector on the end. Now, when you connect these, make sure you connect ground data voltage as it's indicated on the board, ground data voltage. The ground cable has the white stripe on it, voltage has the text on it, and the data cable is in the middle. And connect our pin. 
I'm only connecting 50 pixels for now, so just enough to get our point across. Now, we plug in power. Once again, we double check, make sure all of our wiring is correct. Load, brown, neutral, blue, ground, green, and yellow. V negative is black, V positive is red. Uh, voltage is red, ground is black. Okay, now we introduce power. And our pixels light. When they light an amber color, you know you've done it correct, because that's the default setting. Once you've got everything cabled correctly, we're going to configure the software, open up your cell phone, and browse wireless networks. You should see an available wireless network called WLED-Tetra2Go. Uh, click on that. It'll prompt you for a password once, the first time you do it. And that password is WLED1234, all the text is lowercase. After that, a browser should pop up showing you the WLED intro screen. If not, open up a web browser and browse to HTTP colon slash slash 4.3.2.1. That should get you to a screen that resembles this. All right, I've got WLED open in a window. And from here you can control you know, directly the color of the pixels. It's green, blue, red. Or you can set some effects. Like Pride or rainbow. Now this is just basic setup going literally from out of the box to getting your lights blinking. There's definitely more things you can do. Things you'll want to look into is configuring. Right now we're, we're connecting to WLED using the onboard access point. You'll want to eventually connect it to your wireless network. From there you would go to config, Wi-Fi setup. You can see here I've connected mine to my wireless network. I've joined it with my password. Um, when in doubt, use DHCP. It'll assign an IP address for you. You can see my local IP address that was assigned is 10.1.1.215. I can click on my computer browser and go to that directly instead of having to connect with my cell phone all the time. So, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free, you know, leave some comments. Uh, in the future, I'm looking to go into more detail as far as the different modules that are available. But in the meantime, have fun, enjoy your lights, and uh, take care.